thank you so much for doing this with me. Our mission is to end mental illness by creating a revolution in brain health. So I hate the term mental illness. I've always hated it. It shames people, it's stigmatizing, and it's wrong. These are brain health issues. And so I'm so grateful you came to our New York clinic and you got scanned and I'll show you that. But, um, and I read your history and I've seen your scans. I want to hear from you, your goal in doing this with me. My biggest goal is one, awareness to get a really good sense of where I'm at and how I can get my brain to a better place. Two, I have brain fog. I can lose a word. And so that is concerning to me. Often I can associate it with some things that I might be eating or what's happening with my gut, things like that. But I want to look into that with you. And I, as you can see in my history, I've done a lot of damage to my brain when I was in my early 20s with cocaine, which is probably the worst thing I could. I mean, thankfully I got sober at 25. So that ended at a young age, but there was enough damage there. And I want to use my brain in new ways. I want to be able to learn in new ways. And so that's a big goal for sure. I love that. Um, So I wrote down some things and I'll actually share my notes with you. But in the chart I got, your goal was to learn about your brain. You have a history of anxiety, depression, childhood sexual trauma, neglect, um, sleep issues, significant postpartum depression a couple of years ago, and Zoloft was really helpful for you. Um, Some supplements, uh, therapy for many years, something called internal family systems, which just sounds so interesting and fascinating. Um, What else should you add to that? Uh, Really, I think some of the things that have helped my brain most are EMDR, IFS, which is internal family systems, uh, and somatic experiencing, along with the help of the psychiatric support. And uh, really getting myself to that safer baseline so I could really start to heal the trauma. And when they put you on medicine, did anybody look at your brain? No. When did depression first visit you? I first was visited by depression when I was 16 when I started to experiment with drugs and alcohol. And at the time I was living with PTSD from a dissociated memory from my childhood. And I didn't actually uncover that memory until I was 36. So I was living with a lot of PTSD symptoms, but not understanding what they were. And it came out as depression, but I would even call it more anxiety than depression. Ever diagnosed with ADD? I wasn't, but I always believed I had some form of ADD. But in a way, it has served me, whether it's ADD or not, I don't know, but my ability to jump from from one thing to the next thing is almost oddly hyper-focused, even though it's flipping. Like I could be writing a book. I've written nine books in 11 years, which you know. And I, I could be writing a book while having other multiple tabs up and like come back to the book. Of course, I've trained myself as the years have gone on to create uninterrupted space and turn off the internet. But for many years, I was writing books on airplanes, you know, writing books like wherever and just super hyper-focused while still being able to like jump in and out. I also will really be very focused when it's something I want to do. If it's something I don't want to do, like put together a toy or something, can't do it. I actually get flooded with emotion and I just check out. Like, no, can't do it. You know, if like an app is too difficult to figure out, nope out, not going to carry on. So when I think of ADD, I think of short attention span, but not for everything. Short attention span for regular 
routine, everyday things, schoolwork, homework, paperwork, chores. But for things that are new, novel, highly interesting, stimulating, or frightening, people with ADD can pay attention just fine. Yeah. And that fools people because if they love a teacher, love is a drug, love is a dopamine drug, they do just fine. Yeah. But for most, it's they just have to work harder than their peers. Um, the second one is easily distract. Um, they tend to see too much, hear too much, sense too much. Um, organization can be a challenge, whether it's time or space. Procrastination. It's like someone has to sort of nudge you to get stuff done. And not the things I want to do, though. Right. Uh, and then I don't procrastinate my work or, you know, but I think like cleaning the closet or something. Yeah, exactly. And then impulse control. I mean, it's interesting that cocaine was, was cocaine the drug you liked the most? I never wanted to be out of control. I wanted to be in control. Um. The cognitive testing you did said your focus could be better. Um, and your scan, which I'll show you in just a sec, is sleepy. So let me show your scans. So we do a study called FACT, and FACT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works. And it basically shows us three things. Good activity, too little or too much. And then my job is to balance it. And here's an example of a healthy set. This is always our goal. Um, the image on the left shows um, the outside surface, we call it our surface scans, and it shows full, even, symmetrical activity. The color is not important. It's the shape. In your scan, what we It's see, like a sad face. <laughs> uh, well, if we look at the active one first, um, it's not a ton of activity in your emotional brain. That's good. That's the Zoloft that's mm. working for you. Um, your cerebellum could be better. So if you did some coordination exercises, that would help. But your visual cortex is really good. So I don't know if you're like visual and good at putting rooms together, but. You know, what's funny. I, um, I have, I can't read a map. But I can remember where I, like, I can visually remember the route. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. And those would be your parietal lobes here on the top. But your temporal lobes and your frontal lobes, we can make those better. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Here we go. So if... The goal is big, fat temporal lobes. Mm -hmm. Yours, to me, look like they got hurt. Mm -hmm. I want them to be fuller, fatter, healthier. And your frontal lobes here, you see these little valleys. That means, yeah, you probably have some ADD symptoms. The interesting thing about Zola is it's an SSRI. It raises serotonin in your brain. Well, when you raise serotonin, it suppresses dopamine. It's like serotonin and dopamine have this teeter-totter where they counterbalance each other. Raise serotonin, tend to lower dopamine. So a lot of women who have ADD, they get depressed because of the stress in their lives. I think in your case, clearly made worse by trauma, clearly made worse 
by the hormonal changes from uh, the birth of your first child. Um, I bet if I would have scanned you right before you got put on Zoloft, your emotional brain would have been really busy. Oh, through the roof. Through the roof. So Zoloft calms it down. And we light candles at church and say, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But I need to find a way to get you more energy and more blood flow to your brain, especially to your temporal lobes. So what I want you to hear is a lot of your brain is beautiful and great, despite the uh, poison you put in it in the past. Brain has an incredible ability to heal, but it has more healing to do, especially in these areas. Now, if you do what I ask you to do, um, two months, four months, a year from now, your brain can look like this. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'm the best student. I love that. So <laughs> I really do. Get- Well, it's because it's something I want to do. I will do it perfectly. (laughs) Well, I mean, I love that. And, um, you know, it's your brain. And it's the thing that creates your work. Mm -hmm. Um, Too often, nobody cares about their brain. Because you can't see it, right? You can see the wrinkles in your skin or the fat around your belly, and you can do something when you're unhappy with it. But because most people never look at their brain, they just don't care. And the low activity in your temporal lobes is why you have brain fog or you drop words sometimes. But we can make that better. And... I'm working on a new PBS special called Memory Makeover. Oh, cool. That'd be a great book, too. That's a good book. Yeah. Um, Most people don't know they can make it worse or they can make it better, depending on the day-to-day decisions that they make. I like that plan a lot. That sounds great. And our mission is to end mental illness. I just... I hate this current paradigm. I think we're in this sort of really dark downward spiral of uh, you tell the doctor your symptoms, he gives you a diagnosis based on your symptoms and then medicates you with no biological data. Nothing. Happening all over the world. And I'm really glad it helped you. It hurts a lot of people. And... And, and we can do better, you know, mm-hmm. and if we can do better, we should do better. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. And it can't just be take the meds. It's got to be everything of all of the above. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm behind it all the way and I'm behind this all the way. And so you can expect me to be a very loud voice box for you. And I really appreciate this because I needed it and was worried. You know, I'm worried when I lose a word. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> so I want to sharpen everything up. Beautiful. Thank you. This is so cool. Well, so honored to know you. Let's be friends and make Thank the world you better for together. Being my brain, my brain, my brain coach. <laughs> I needed this. This was no accident. So I really am excited. 